Hello traders, this is Rich Derrick from TradeSite. This is the uh, evening uh, market preview for the next day, which is going to be Thursday, February 7th, 2013. We had a, a very split market today, uh, what uh, technical folks refer to as a bifurcation, where we had outperformance in one side of the market and weakness in, in another. In today's case, we had outperformance in the S&P index and weakness in the, uh, in the NASDAQ side. Apple tried to uh, reach up into uh, the gap window from the from the earnings gap down, but uh, was rejected. And that was really kind of driving the bus for the Nasdaq futures today. And while they did have some uh, some fits and starts, they wound wound it up closing lower on the day by 12 handles. The S&P kind of treaded water and held in there, uh, basically unchanged on the day. Again, uh, closing above that 1500 level. The Dow was uh, essentially flat on the day, but I think the real the real, the real, the real important point today uh, from the equity side was the uh, was the relative weakness in the Nasdaq side. Again, we're going to take a look at the uh, the currencies later as well, and a couple other key internals. But let's get on to the uh, to the equity futures charts. All right, now here's a look at the uh, the ES futures. Still just kind of gaming the area of 1500 on the on the um, on the GAN box here, which is that 8 8 level. Still above the uh, the 10 EMA. We're actually recorded pretty much about the same settlement up here that we have for three sessions now. Here's one, here's two, here's three. So this is definitely a big area of interest, just above 1,500. Uh, the bulls will be happy to see that we're still closing above 1,500. We haven't broken trend. Maybe we're just pausing here and waiting to uh, push higher into this more overbought territory. But uh, you know, we're still going to take this one candle at a time. The uh, the high water mark for the year to date is definitely going to be the area to watch. Right around 1514, so keep an eye on that uh, going forward tomorrow. As far as the uh, NQ charts go, here's a look at the NQs, and you can see that we're, st you know, really nothing new to, new to report here other than we're still boxed up. We had a pretty pretty good drop two days ago, a strong up day, and then today was was kind of just a just a measuring off day. And as you can see, we closed within the real body. Of the of the first day of the year, so there's really nothing new new to report here until we leave this area. The only real technical feature is that very subtly we're loading even more power and more energy into this pattern because this pattern of consolidation has been protracted by yet another day. All right, now here's our uh, multi-sector chart. You can see that uh, did have a little bit of a pause here in the uh, in the in the uh, biotech index, the biotechs, the BTK. Not really doing too much, too much today. A little bit of a rise here, very subtly, uh, in the uh, in the in the BKX. Uh, kind of just really just not not too much to, to learn from this chart, other than the uh, XAU is still continuing to climb, just very gradually here off this off this low. Still very very oversold and still full of uh, oversold energy that could be released to the upside. Uh, if the opportunity presents itself. Digging a little deeper into the market internals, the NDX XPX cross matched the previous low, so that's another uh, indication of relative weakness that's been for quite some time now in the uh, in this key cross and in this relationship in the market. Uh, did not break to a new low, small plus for the bulls, but uh, but uh, definitely something that the gear, that, that the bears could pounce on, and uh, and really take advantage of if we start to make a new leg down here and start to pick up back to this downside trend. Here's a look at the 10-day 10-day trend, the 10-day arms. Still a little, a little bit below the the one level, in the bottom third of the uh, of the normal normal trading range, but has yet to record that climactic reading. Still standing by, waiting for that. Now this may this may wind up being the uh, the most important chart of the uh, of the day. This is the uh, total put call ratio. Put call ratio is uh, something that we use as a contrary indicator, looking for uh, looking for climactic activity. And you can see here that uh, according to to this reading, we've now we've now recorded a new low close on the year. So this this means that there's there's been a, there was this is the most bullish reading. According to the pull call index of the entire year. Now keep in mind that this is a this is a 
a contrary indicator, a counter indicator. So when people get overly bullish, that's when you have to be on guard for the reversal. This is not something that trades in direction with the market. Generally, this is this is just the opposite. When you're getting overly bullish readings, that means you're getting more and more overbought and closer and closer to an inflection point on the downside. The uh, you know, the real key inflection point is when you get around this 0.5 area. We're still quite a ways from that, but we are making progress in that direction, and we have recorded a new low close on the year. Now, one of our other key intramarkets that we've been following has also uh, recorded what could be a problem for the market, and uh, definitely something that has uh, you know potentially very negative implications if it if this condition persists. We had uh, fairly weak trading today in the oil services index. Uh, that's the OSX. It was lower on the day, much weaker than the uh, overall market. This definitely underperformed the overall uh, crude crude futures, and so what we're seeing now is we're starting to see a roll down in the oil stocks themselves, which usually precedes a roll down in crude. Uh, a market that's generally got a, a, a very firm bid under it at this point in the cycle should have uh, rising uh, energy prices and also rising energy stock prices. This is going to be a relationship here that we need to watch and if this condition persists this indicates that that's not going to happen but we have declining en energy prices and, and also declining underlying energy stock prices. There's one little positive divergence. Let me flip to the daily chart here. The uh, the SOX index did outperform the NDX day. The SOX was up on the day and outperformed the NDX. So this made a new high on this move. That is a bullish development. This little this little mini breakout is still uh, expanding the range to the upside. So that's very positive for the Nasdaq. If uh, if this if this trend continues, this will really buffer the uh, the Nasdaq if we can pick up some, some more you know relative momentum here. So definitely keep an eye on this. This is really one of the only one of the only things I saw today, uh, looking over all the charts and relationships that really was uh, particularly positive. All right, now on to, on to some of the individual sectors. The XAL was was definitely the strongest sector of the day, up one and three quarters percent. Taking a little bit of a bounce here off this pullback, we traveled basically from the eight ace level down to the seven ace level, found support there. And we're hooking back up into that 8 ace level at 50. We uh, came up a little bit short of that of that ultimate seeker countdown exhaustion warning. We only got the bar 7 of the 13 required for a signal. So we'll definitely keep an eye on this. And that could definitely definitely happen here as we kind of push higher and try and get into these overbought areas on the chart. Here's the XAU, which also outperformed the broad market. Uh, it's still negative by all measures. Uh, it's still just kind of hovering here above the uh, zero waste level. Uh, it's still kind of contained here and trapped below the 10 EMA. So I'll tell you what, if you if you don't believe that the 10 EMA is important, take a look at the touches here on this chart. It's a high water mark of this bounce on this day. Same here yesterday and also today. So the 10, AM, 10 EMA is definitely something that you sh should have on all time frame charts all the way down to 15 minutes. Here's the banking index. The BKX did make a new nominal high today. It was a fairly narrow range day, but it did definitely outperform the broad market by a little bit. And certainly the NASDAQ up at 7 A's here. And I remember the 8 A's level of 56 and a quarter is the next target and is definitely going to be a big level and would be fairly extended in this low beta index if it gets there. Okay, here's the SOX index bumping up against the plus 2 A's level. Definitely uh, one of the better performers on the day and definitely the strongest performer out of the NASDAQ patch. Right up at the 2 A's. This doesn't uh, necessarily change the trend, but if it does force the frame shift, that's going to be notable and something that we'll be watching the next couple of days here. So we'll close above the 2 A's level here on the GAN box would force a frame shift, widen out these levels, and potentially give it some more room to the upside. Now the BTK tried new price, tried new higher prices, but uh, ultimately was rejected. Did sweep above the prior high, ultimately settled right at it. Got a new countdown going on here. Now we're on day day seven up, so definitely want to keep an eye on this as we go forward. And finally, here's the OSX. The OSX actually recouped a really really pretty good drop. Took it all the way down to the seven eighths level, which was more than a one week low ultimately to close just above, just kind of in the area where it opened. It was lower on the day for sure, 
but it did recoup that level. And a lot of times when you see these stocks hit this uh, 8 ace level, you'll either, either see them consolidate or retrace to some degree. And, of course, the retracements can always turn into much more than that. But for right now, I've got this little potential hammer here. So I have to see what this, uh, how, this how tomorrow plays out because this, this should be very interesting. And we want to see how this, uh, this next candle plays out. Here's a look at the oil futures. Uh, no surprise that they look somewhat like the OSX looks, but uh, they were actually relatively stronger than the OSX, and that's why we saw that divergence before in the OSX versus the uh, crude futures. Keep in mind here that we are 10 days up in the secret countdown for a sell phase for a sell signal, so we're only only about three days away from a signal uh, if we get some higher highs here. All right, well that's going to be it for this evening. Uh, as always, please feel free to leave a comment below. We always welcome that. And uh, until next time, this has been Rich Derrick from TradeSite, and thanks for listening.